Well, Kevin Harvick has won three of the four Monster Energy Cup Series races this year. A man who hits it and wins every time is Jerry Bonkowski of NBCSports.com. So Harvick is trying to reach up with your standards here, Jerry. Uh, covering motorsports as, uh, of all sorts, including NASCAR, for NBCSports.com. Uh, this is the first time, we believe, in three years that a driver has won three races in a row. I was impressed by this because it was done at a mile track in Phoenix, whereas, you know, the others were kind of larger speedways, that sort of thing. Uh, but I just, open-ended question, uh, can you kind of comment for me uh, about the development of Harvick as a driver, Jerry Bonkowski? Well, I mean, honestly, this was not a surprise in any way, shape, or form. I mean, um, you know, Harvick, you know, Phoenix has been like one of his best, if not his best tracks in his career. I don't have the stats right in front of me, but I believe between the uh, Cup Series and the Xfinity Series, he's got like nine wins there, I mean, so, or ten wins, I mean, after yesterday. So, I mean, it's not that huge of a surprise. I mean, that kind of track just really plays to his strength. And let's not forget this, too. I mean, Kevin Harvick's, what, uh, 41, 42 years old, I believe it is. And he's been racing at Phoenix ever since, you know, his uh, Winston West days, even before he actually got to that, the cup level. I mean, he, he's he been, you know, racing at Phoenix probably for the last 20-plus years. So the place is not uh, a stranger by any stretch of the imagination to him. And he does very, very well there. I mean, I... I, I wouldn't be surprised that if you asked Kevin Harvick what's your favorite racetrack to race upon or what's the one you're most successful at, I think he'd pick Phoenix almost uh, immediately as the, the top uh, the top choice. Well, I want to ask, though, I, I seem to recall, and maybe I'm living in the past, but I remember when he uh, first joined it, and there was a lot of feeling of, he was able to be entitled, you know, because he took over from Earnhardt and all this. Do you still think that there's any of that feeling around with Harvick, or has he pretty much proven himself and overcome such uh, such feelings? The guy's won over 30 races. There's no way he's entitled. I mean, he, he is an extremely, extremely good race car driver and a winning race car driver. So, And, and frankly, you know, I, I, rem I know what you're talking about, you know, back when he... Uh, was chosen to, to replace the late Dale Earnhardt, there was a, a criticism of him that he was being entitled. And I totally, totally agree, disagreed about it then. I disagree about it now. I mean, he was not entitled. He worked his butt off to get where he got to. And, you know, the, the, the plan was within a year or two, had um, uh, Earnhardt not been killed, Harvick was going to be with the RCR at some point. You know, within a year or two uh, later, uh, they just had to, you know, uh, advance the, the plan because obviously Dale Sr. was killed at Daytona in 2001. So, no, I don't think there was any entitlement. I mean, this guy, you know, he, everything he's earned, he's worked for. And, you know, he, he's definitely earned all of it. I mean, he, he's not, nothing's been handed to him. I mean, and, you know, if you want to call being given a ride with RCR, having, having, having something handed to him, he more than paid off dividends and return on investment with what he did for that team. And certainly what he's done uh, since he moved to Stuart Haas racing as well, too. Well, you know, He's been outspoken. There's a story. Dustin Long has written this on NBCSports.com uh, about going back to the grassroots racing. Uh, one of the surprising things that I saw is that Harvick was saying, you know, they're running the trucks, the Craftman trucks, on the wrong tracks and all. Uh, now, I guess, you know, I mentioned the entitled and all this. Now he's being outspoken. I would imagine since he's so successful this season, his comments are going to carry more weight. But could he, uh, you know, get, could he lead a momentum to get uh, some of the Craftsman Truck Series tracks, I don't know, changed, uh, more involvement in grassroots racing? Do you, do you think that that's possible, uh, that this can be enhanced, uh, or that what he's talking about can can occur because he's winning more? That's my question. Well, he certainly, you know, has uh, uh, very good opinions uh, for the most part. And let's not forget, he also owned a, a truck and Xfinity team, you know, there for a long time as well, too. So, you know, he's got the experience, you know, not only for driving those uh, kind of cars, but all, or in trucks, but also, you know, owning, <laughs> excuse me, owning the Bless you. well, too. I think that, you know, um, you know, NASCAR has become much more willing to listen and more open to listen to drivers over the last, you know, probably the last decade plus. And, you know, I think that uh, if a driver comes to NASCAR and has a, you know, a suggestion or an opinion, as long as they can back it up, NASCAR will listen to them. And I think that, you know, what Harvick says, I think, does make a lot of sense. I mean, you know, the, the Camping World Truck Series uh, is still a very viable series, but, you know, it gets a little frustrating, I would think. You know, this is just my opinion. 
um, it, it would get a little frustrating if you're a driver and you know you're racing at a place and you know the place is only maybe a, a quarter full in that you know I mean you know the truck series I think would be ideal to race at smaller tracks where you could probably sell them out and also you know venues that don't currently have NASCAR races I think they would definitely attract a lot of fans to go there as well so I like what some things that Harvick has said um, you know and I I certainly respect his opinion because he seems to know what he's talking about and he has the experience to back it up as well. The truck series I uh, I I do like the truck series I'm not going to say that I do watch every race or anything like that of it but the color scheme you know that the I remember last year uh, opening up uh, the paper of a truck race and there was the South Carolina Gamecocks truck and it just right, you right. know I mean, it was just great it reminded me of uh, you know I, I know that the college sports in Nebraska I think used to have a, a stock car on one of the circuits but uh, you know things like that uh, perhaps we could see more of well let me ask you that do you think there's a chance we could see more of something like that at larger levels considering that sponsorship is now becoming more hit or miss I can remember for instance about 15 years ago Derek Cope driving a car sponsored by the rock group Poison now that got me watching a Pocono race I gotta tell you uh, do you think we could see more, more of that is there any plans for some of these unique sponsorships problem, uh, Marky, is that, you know, it's a return on investment, and a lot of these uh, sponsors, especially those that are in the truck series, you know, today, are getting a great return on investment because, let's face it, they're not paying 10, 15, 20 million dollars uh, a season like they would in the Cup Series, or maybe even to the, to the lesser extent in the Xfinity Series, so, you know, they're, they're getting a lot more bang for their buck, if you will, uh, with their sponsorship in the truck series. The problem, though, is that, you know, a lot of truck teams still are struggling for sponsors, and, um, you know, the, the, how do you fix that? I mean, it, it's not just a, a problem that's, you know, uh, solely with the truck series. It's also with the Xfinity series and the Cup series. But, you know, to, to, to your point, uh, you know, if, if I'm a potential sponsor and, and, you know, I have a limited budget, I know I'm going to probably get a lot more exposure and a lot more bang for my buck if I do uh, sponsor a truck team because, it, you know, the cost will be a lot lower as opposed to, um, you know, going to the Xfinity or a couple of them. I mean, for example, you've got uh, what is it, the University of uh, Northern Ohio, which is very involved with NASCAR, and I think they uh, sponsored a truck uh, not too long ago because it wasn't all that, you know, expensive as opposed to trying to put their name, let's say, on a Cup uh, Series car. So, you know, the, you have to pick where it makes the most sense financially, and I think a lot of these uh, smaller sponsors see that they can definitely – uh, get much more return on their investment and much more exposure if they do uh, sponsor a truck series kind of, uh, entry. How long do you th how long do you think that uh, Harvick can keep this streak going? I mean, uh, you know, the all time record is ten set by Richard Petty years ago. But uh, you know, could you see sort of a, for lack of a better term, uh, a Joe DiMaggio type of streak by Harvick? Uh, do you think that he's the favorite to win the Auto Club four hundred? Well, he's from California, and Bakersfield's only, what, three, four hours away from uh, from Fontana. Uh, he's always kind of considered that it's kind of his home uh, cup track, and he's done well there over the years as well, too. So, yeah, I think he has a very good chance of, of uh, extending that streak. But, you know, with each successive win, it's much and much, more and more harder to win a race. So, I mean, if he were to win at California and Fontana, um, you know, uh, my, I don't see him going ten races in a row, but, you know, given the, the – the jump they've had and the success they've had in, you know, winning three of the first four races, you know, anything's possible, I think. I mean, uh, but I think that, you know, after California, then we go back to some of the regular tracks. Uh, you know, Bristol, he's done fairly well at. I think he could do, he could win there. Uh, Richmond, I think he could win, or I'm sorry, Martinsville, rather. Uh, he could win well well there. So, I mean, there, there are some venues coming up that he certainly can win, but, uh, you know, to just think he could go ten wins in a row, that's really asking an awful lot. But, I mean, uh, I certainly think he could win in Fontana and, I guess, you know, this is, uh, you mentioned the West Coast races. Are they bunched in by design? I would think that that uh, traveling, you know, that sort of thing that they wanted to do that. But at the same time, uh, and I know Daytona and Atlanta certainly aren't that far away from the Tri-Cities, but I, I, it is. It's like, you know, th different time zones. Uh, it's, it just seems so far away sometimes. Uh, is it by design, though, to keep all the West Coast uh, races together? Well, if you go back to, let's say, maybe 2003, 2004, 
you know, back then it was the exact opposite. They didn't want to have the uh, races on the West Coast jumbled together, or, you know, bundled together, I should say. But, you know, over the last uh, probably six, seven years, it's really become a very uh, key component of the, of the season. And, you know, back, you know, like I said, back in 2003, 2004, back in that era, you know, there was a rule, of, or I mean, a, uh, uh, a train of thought, rather, that you couldn't have three races that close together back to back to back because, you know, the, the attendance would suffer. And actually, as it's proven over these last few years, the attendance actually has, has uh, been very good at all three tracks. I mean, yeah, sure, you know, Vegas is 300 miles from Phoenix. Vegas is, uh, what, 350, I think, from Montana. So, you know, the, the uh, uh, you know, you're all in the same general area, but you're also, um, you know, attracting a different clientele. I mean, in California, you're going to attract the Californians. In Phoenix, you're going to attract the Phoenix Phoenicians. And in Vegas, you're going to attract the Vegas folks. So, uh, actually, it's turned out to be a marketing, um, uh, you know, very smart marketing move on NASCAR's part, the part to have all three. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit more difficult, but at the same time, you know, many of the teams, they basically just park themselves out west for three weeks, and it's not as difficult as, let's say, going back and forth to the west coast three different times at three different places in the season. So it actually makes a, a lot of sense, and, you know, the NASCAR has been able to, you know, show that this is a very smart move, and I'm sure they can continue this for many, many more years to come. Okay. It's kind of interesting. Uh, there used to be... So, and, and forgive me, I don't remember the exact order of what the schedule was in years gone by and such. But yeah, I, I will say that it, it has been uh, for me a little bit of a, gee, they're out there again and all this. But uh, Martinsville on the twenty fifth, and then Bristol next month. So you know they're coming back here soon enough. Hey, I don't mean to uh, pick on the staff of NBCSports dot com, but nobody picked Harvick to win in Phoenix. You picked Jimmy Johnson. And it seems as if Johnson's been in about a year-long slump. What's wrong? If I had the answer to that, Rick Hendrick would probably be higher for a million dollars a year. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, they, they're such an excellent team. They have such excellent personnel. They've got an excellent driver who's won seven championships. They've got a crew chief that is best in the business. We, there's just no answer. Unfortunately, I mean, they're trying to, you know, I'm not, I know Chad Knauss is trying everything he can. Jimmy's trying everything he can. But, you know, there there comes a point in, you know, in a, you know, not just in motorsports, but in any team sports where, you know, things may be going good for a long, long time. And then eventually, you know, they go away. I mean, here I am in Chicago, and I remember the Chicago Bulls winning six championships. <laughs> uh, what was it, eight years or whatever it was? Yeah. And, and then the, the L.A. Lakers, they won a whole bunch of championships. The Boston Celtics won a whole bunch of championships. It's just the evolution of the sport, you know, for as successful as you've been for a long time, sooner or later that success is going to, you know, start going away. But I think that Jimmy Johnson still has many more wins in him, and I think he still has at least one more championship in him. So the question is, you know, how do they get out of the uh, the problems they've had? I mean, you know, he's had a kind of a rough start all you know, this season. Uh, I mean, coming into Phoenix, he was 29th in the standings, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually, I think I'm going to ride him, though, for the, for the next few races, at least in Fontana, because, you know, again, that's his home track. Sure. If he does well there, I think that he could very easily, you know, win and finally you know, get himself back on track uh, in Fontana this Sunday. I was going to say that. Yeah, it is his home track. And so... Jerry Bonkowski, I'd like you to think that 1420 NBC Sports Radio, Tri-Cities, Tri-City Sports Now is your home away from home. All right. Well, it is. All right. Well, thank you very much here and all that. And of course, I always love hearing your takes on this. And they're, I mean, just the man when it comes with the knowledge and such. Jerry Bonkowski, of course, will be in touch with you very shortly uh, for the next race. And yeah, maybe it will be Johnson. Maybe Harvick can continue his streak. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, when Chase Elliott finally comes through. We'll be back. Our final segment on Tri City Sports now after this. I guess uh, you uh, have, I don't know if you like the Cubs the